friends, it's me. I'm back. I'm here in my new office and coming at you to answer any questions you have about visas, green cards, citizenship, visa delays, administrative processing, 221G, refused. Um, the situation in Yerevan, at the consulate in Yerevan, in Islamabad, in Khartoum, and all the other things. What to do about diversity visa lottery delays, uh, how to prepare for green card interviews. All these sorts of questions are what I'm going to answer today, what I'm going to get into. Um, and I hope all of you are thriving and doing great. I'm so happy to be here with you, and I hope you tune in. Um, we've had, as you may know, um, I am, we have a Facebook group, <coughs> excuse me, and the Facebook group is dedicated to an issue that is so important to me, which is visa delays, 221G and administrative processing. We have over 8,000 people in our Facebook group. Um, it's a very active group, it's something that's very important to me. And in this group, I share special information and videos and trainings that I don't put out anywhere else. Um, and I try to, uh, participate in the group and, um, Hey, how's it going, Armando? Hope you're doing well. Um, and today we had some questions in the Facebook group that I thought were particularly good. And I wanted to take the time to log in and answer those questions. We're also live on YouTube and some other places. Um, but one of them is from Caitlin, Caitlin Ryan. She's a great member of the Facebook group. She's super active. And uh, I, she, if Caitlin, if you're listening to this, I really appreciate you and value your participation in the group. Caitlin um, often brings to my attention people who <coughs> post things that are in violation of the rules of our group, just like spammy stuff, things like that. Pardon me. Caitlin says, my husband had his visa interview today and basically the consular officer told him that he needs that she needs to review his file and will call him. He answered all the questions right, and she didn't ask for any other documents. She did give him his passport back. She said, "What are we doing wrong? What are the next steps?" So let's review this. First of all, Caitlin, I'm sorry you're in this situation. These administrative processing delays are horrible. They are so confusing and difficult. <clears throat> but um, I want you to know, you, one of your questions is, what are we doing wrong? You didn't do anything wrong, at least nothing that you described in this uh, description. You paid the filing fee. You filled out all the forms, I'm assuming. You went to the interview, or he did. He answered all of the questions that they asked him. Presumably, he answered them truthfully and accurately to the best of his abilities. You didn't say that they asked for documents. She said that the officer didn't ask for any other documents. So you provided all the documents that were requested. And in other words, you did everything that the process and our system asked you to do. You and your husband did everything that you were supposed to do. You did it all. So why, why have they not processed his visa? Why do they put him into administrative processing? Why did they do that? Um, the answer is that I don't know. Why would anybody know why they do this? I think what happens in my experience is certain groups of people, um, people from majority Muslim countries or people who are Muslim or people who are from Iran or Pakistan or Saudi Arabia, etc. When you are from these countries or you, especially if you're male and you go to the interview, they put you in administrative processing. It's totally unfair. It's totally unreasonable. But that's what they do. And it doesn't mean that you did anything wrong. It doesn't mean that there's a problem with your visa. The problem is with the way that they conduct these interviews. Now, the next question would be, what would be our next steps? So let's define what administrative processing is. What that means 
There are two other words for administrative processing. One is called refused, and the other is 221G. Now, what all these things mean is that you had a visa interview, you completed the interview, and they didn't make a decision. That's all it means. Refused, 221G, and administrative processing mean the same thing. And Caitlin asked what she should do in this situation. And really, there are only two ways out of administrative processing. One is to wait it out. Just take your hands and sit on them and keep waiting and waiting and waiting. Because that's what you're going to have to do. You have to wait. And how long are you going to have to wait? Who knows? Could be a week. Could be a month. Could be two months. Could be six months. Could be a year. Could be two years. Could be indefinitely. But you, if you wait, eventually, I think, perhaps, maybe, they'll get around to processing the paperwork. The second thing you can do, and this is where we come in, is that we take action. We go to federal court and we sue them. And the basis of the lawsuit is, hey, you can't do this. This isn't fair. This isn't reasonable. This is not legal. You owe us a decision within a reasonable period of time. And when they don't make a decision within the reasonable period of time, as they're legally obligated to do, you can sue them, you can bring them to court and make them answer for their negligence, their indifference, their whatever, whatever's causing this delay, you can make them answer to that. And when you sue them and you make them get a lawyer and come to court and answer for the delay, what typically happens is they do what they're supposed to do anyway, which is to process the paperwork. Now, if it sounds like I'm getting upset and I'm angry about this, it's because I am. This is unfair. And there's so many people out there that are like Caitlin who are being separated from their spouse, their husbands, their wives, their mothers, their fathers, their children, their loved ones, their job opportunities, their educational opportunities. They're being separated. They're being delayed. They're being treated unfairly. And it's profoundly unfair. This is a huge injustice. And, you know, nobody wants a lawsuit. Nobody wants a lawsuit. No one wants to go to court and sue the consulate. Well, maybe I do, but most people don't want to do that. All they want to do is get the visa, the green card, or the benefit that they deserve. That's all they want. But you know, friends, you sometimes you don't get what you want without a fight. No one will give you the benefit that you deserve unless you fight them for it. And that's where we come in. We we help people who can't do this on their own. They're stuck. And like Caitlin, they're stuck. And, you know, Caitlin's only just been in this for a few days. So hopefully she won't need our help and her husband's visa will get processed. But what if it doesn't get processed? What if time goes on? I mean, how long are you going to wait for these people to get around to doing their jobs? It's ridiculous. And I think the important point is that you need to know that there's an option. Most people don't even know about uh, a mandamus lawsuit. They don't even know that you can go to court and take action and challenge the delay. Um, so if you have learned anything from me, you've learned that you have these legal options, um, you're way ahead of things, way ahead. Um, so I hope you know that this is works in your favor. And, um, you know, um, one of the things that people always think when they do the lawsuit. I mean, the, the main objection to doing the lawsuit is that people are afraid to take action. They're afraid that the government will get mad and file a lawsuit against them. And that's just not the case. We have tons and tons and tons of testimonial videos on our YouTube channel and positive reviews where people talk about their experiences. And I always ask people in the testimonial videos, I said, hey, what were you really worried about when we got started with your case? Were you worried that they were going to, consul was going to get mad and sue you? And they all say the same thing. And it's common sense because, you know, the consuls can do whatever they want. And if you sue them, well, wouldn't they just logically get upset? Couldn't they just get upset and deny you? It doesn't work like that. They can't do that. They don't do that. 
And one of the risks of filing a mandamus lawsuit is not that you're going to get denied because they're, they'll get mad at you. There's just no retaliation. You see that again and again and again with these sorts of cases. Um, so that's one thing that people are worried about. And the other thing is people worry about the cost. And I get that. I totally get that. Nobody wants to hire a lawyer. Nobody wants to pay a lawyer, especially when you deserve the visa anyway. Why should you have to do this? I get it. Um, but waiting indefinitely for a delayed visa also has a cost. And at some point, that cost becomes too high. It imperils your relationship with your family or your significant other. Um, educational opportunities and job opportunities can slip away. So just waiting um, also entails a significant cost. Um, let me just go to some of the questions and say, first of all, I want to say hi to Denise, our friend on YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate it. From Jamaica. Uh, went to my one of my honeymoon to Jamaica, to the Cliffs of Negril. So I always have a huge fondness for that beautiful country with beautiful people. Um, uh, Ismael Yusuf on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in, my friend. Says, sir, after a long time, refused one week administrative to issue. I hope that means you got your visa. And if you did, Congratulations. That's super awesome. Um, Ricardo Casares, greetings, Josh. Hope you're doing great. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Um, give me some of your questions. What questions do you have, friends? I'm here to answer anything that you want to know about. Ibrahim from Minnesota, thank you for tuning in. Um, if anybody has a question, I want you to email me. This is my email address here. I'm going to put it in the chat. Um, I'll put it in here. I'm going to show it. This is my email address. And in the subject line for the email, I want you to put no more waiting. Put no more waiting in your subject line of your email to me. Tell me what's going on. Tell me how I can help you. Um, we've had so many people contact me from seeing YouTube videos. And they're like, I've read all your videos, I've watched all your videos, and I want to hire you, I want to get this done. And it makes me so happy to hear that because I know that we have a strategy that works. We see it time and time again. So send me a message, no more waiting is what I want you to write. Um, here's a question from Sad. Saad. Says, I'm the husband of a U.S. citizen and interviewed last month, and I was told we're holding your passport, your case is an AP. Well, I just discussed that exact same scenario, said. Um, maybe you're, um, maybe you listened, but uh, basically um, you have two ways out. You can wait it out or you can file a lawsuit. Guess which one's more effective. Guess which one I'm a fan of. I don't like waiting. If you want to wait around, you don't need my help. Um, we had a question uh, from a client, one of our new clients, she said, well, can you file an expedite request? I don't want to file a lawsuit. Expedite requests don't really work too well. If you want to expedite a case, the effective way to do that is to file a lawsuit and challenge the delay as unreasonable. That's the most effective way. That's the most effective way to do it. Um, let's see. <laughs> What other questions do we have? Let me see what else I can do. What other questions I can answer? Um, let me know what questions you have. Um, let's see. Here's a good one. Jivan, Josh, is there a process you have to follow when you get a green card and you want to travel back to your home country, Trinidad? Um, the answer is no. If you have a green card, you're you're allowed to travel. All you do is get your green card, as long as it's unexpired, and you get your U.S. passport, and then you can travel. Now, I don't know your scenario. There could be various reasons why traveling wouldn't be advisable, but basically that's what you do. Let's see what else. 
been a long week, my friend. Um, how long should we wait for suing the embassy? It's been a month of administrative processing. Well, I'm sorry you're in this situation, but I guess the first question that I would have when analyzing this is, when did you file this case? When did you file your case initially? If you filed your case 18 months ago, for example, then you're still waiting, and that's that's an unreasonable delay. Um, do you have to give them 60 days? Goran, I'm so glad you asked, asked me this question. I get this question all the time. Hey, I can't file a lawsuit because it hasn't been 60 days. Sometimes I hear it as I can't file a lawsuit because it hasn't been 180 days. So a lot of times people will say, okay, I have to wait 180 days. And then they keep waiting and waiting and waiting. And it just adds six months to the delay. You do not have to wait 60 days. You do not have to wait 180 days. The question is, you, you can file the lawsuit once the delay becomes unreasonable. And the question is, when is the delay unreasonable? And it's hard to say exactly when the delay becomes unreasonable. But I would say that if you applied 18 months ago, that's not reasonable. Um, Sad said, I scheduled with your office, but I want to speak with you before I proceed. Well, I'm glad you scheduled the appointment with, um, with our office, and I'm glad you're here today to ask, ask questions. The process with my office is first, we have a free case evaluation that you can set up uh, where we gather information and we learn a little bit more about your situation. And then we schedule a strategy session with one of our directors of client engagement. And that's how someone can be a client of our firm. Uh, but if you have specific questions, you can always ask me here as well. Uh, thank you, Syed. Thank you, brother. That's very kind of you. You stay blessed as well. Um, Joseph Jean-Pierre, our friend on YouTube, says, They refused my fiancé visa after a year of waiting on 221G. What should I do now? Is getting married the best option? They said they didn't believe the relationship is real. Well, if they didn't believe the relationship is real, then you have a big problem. I think that you should get married. You should consider getting married. Um, you should consider getting married, but you should also think about the fundamental problem, Joseph. The fundamental problem is they don't believe your relationship is genuine. What can you do to address their concerns? Maybe it involves getting married. Maybe it involves going to your home country to spend time with your fiance and after getting married and, and spending that time together and developing the relationship. Uh, maybe it's sending remittances to him or her. Uh, but all those things you should think about. Daniel Lopez, how do I get an I-601 waiver approved? Well, that's a simple question. Um, that's a simple question. Basi basically, this is a process. Um, the I-601 is for a bunch of different reasons. Could be for fraud, misrepresentation, could be for a criminal case, could be for something else. But essentially, there are several things that we do to get those cases approved. First, you need to, in my opinion, admit responsibility for whatever went wrong. If it's a fraud issue, say, look, I did it. I'm sorry. So first you say you admit responsibility, take responsibility. Second, you say you're sorry. And the third is you ask for forgiveness. So each of those steps is challenging because sometimes when there's fraud or there's a criminal case, people don't want to say that they did it. They want to say, look, it wasn't my fault. I didn't speak English. I didn't understand. Um, my lawyer told me to plead guilty. It wasn't me. I'm innocent. But that's not accepting responsibility. Accepting responsibility is when you say, I own this. This mistake is mine. The second thing you do is you say you're sorry. And the third thing you do is you ask for forgiveness. Now, how do you ask for forgiveness? This is a process that requires a showing that your qualifying relative, your U.S. citizen spouse or permanent resident spouse or someone a parent would suffer extreme hardship. So I think, you know, you say you you say I did it, I'm sorry, and then you immediately talk about the hardship. 
um, that's what that's what you do. But it's a long conversation. And I'll, I'll probably make a video on that. Thanks for the question. Ali Ahmad, I filed a lawsuit with you. Congratulations on this amazing decision. We love having you as a client. It says they asked for documents and a re-medical, which I submitted on April 28th, but they're still delaying it. Ali, this is what I want to tell you. Don't worry, okay? They might still be delaying it, but I suspect that you're in the process of getting approved. Why do I say that? Well, if they wanted to deny you, they wouldn't ask you to do another medical exam. So I've never had a case where someone said, the consulate said, hey, we want you to do another medical exam, and then the person ended up getting denied. So you're on track for approval, um, and the lawsuit itself is doing its job. So don't have to worry about the delay because we already have their attention and the lawsuit is already working its magic of challenging the delay. So I think you should you should rest assured. Now, uh, obviously, um, we wish that it would get approved sooner rather than later, but nevertheless, it's okay. Um, Perla Rodriguez, our friend on YouTube, says her husband has been in El Salvador since January 5th. He passed his interview. His case went from refused to ready, and then they asked for police documents, and there's been no update since April 28th. Well, Perla, I'm very sorry to hear that. It sounds like your husband is stuck, and the answer is you can try and wait it out, or you can take action. And which one of those two things do you think is going to be more effective? Obviously, it's taking action. We would love to help you with this. Um, if you want to schedule an appointment with my team, um, we would love, we would absolutely love to help you and learn more about your case. I'm going to put a link um, in the notes here. Well, in the description, in the description, um, I put a link where you can schedule a case evaluation with my team. It should be down below. Um, and uh, we would love to talk to you more about your case. We'd love to learn more to see if there might be a way we can help you out. That would be, we'd love helping people, um, and that would be great. Desi Productions USA, our friend on YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your question. It says, I'm in removal proceedings for crossing illegally from Canada to the U.S. <clears throat> I'm married to a U.S. citizen. I have an approved I-130. The biggest problem I have is an pending alcohol-related charge in Canada. I'm from India. Well, you didn't bring me an easy question. Um, so the solution to the alcohol-related charge in Canada, is, the solution is in Canada. So you would need to find a criminal defense attorney in Canada that can help you sort this out and um, look online for someone or go through your network. I don't really know anything about Canadian law, but I know that there are people who do, and those people are in Canada. So you got to find someone in Canada who knows about this sort of thing. Um, Goran, wife was put in administrative processing asking for more information about the spouse. Goran, contact us. Look at the notes below and book an appointment with our, uh, book a case evaluation with our team. We'd love to help you. Um, yeah, I mean, let me know what we can do to help. Let me know what we can do to help. Um, a lot of thing, uh, Nabi, Na, Na, Nabi, uh, I'm not sure I'm saying your name right. It says, is it difficult to file a lawsuit for a fiancé? I heard the case is easier when it's a spouse. Um, I would say that the spouse of a U.S. citizen has, in some ways, more legal rights than the fiancé. But nevertheless, you filed this petition, and you deserve to get it approved. So that's something that we can look at. And we've recently had some good results in fiancé visa cases, so I'm not afraid to file them. Um, it says, here we go with Ali. Thank you for your answer. I found you the best lawyer for the lawsuit. You sued the embassy on the 59th day. I'm 100% sure that they were sitting on the case, and it comes out only with the lawsuit that you filed. Exactly, exactly. And 
Ali, I'm going to tell you again, do not worry about an ongoing delay because we hold their feet to the fire with the lawsuit. So I'm not worried about it at all. You'll get the visa you deserve soon. I'm very sure of it. Um, and, uh, you know, I absolutely love what I do. I'm so passionate about my work. If I can help a good person like Ali get the visa that he deserves, um, I'm so proud of that. And I'm so grateful that I have an opportunity to help good people. Um, I'm sorry that anyone needs my help at all because in a better world, you would not need to file a lawsuit just to get your visa approved. It would, should happen because you legally deserve it. But nevertheless, this is the situation that we're in. They're ridiculous. Um, oh, look who it is. It's Saima Rabani. I love your little cartoon. It's so great to see you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for spending a little time with, with us here on our YouTube channel. We have tons of new videos coming out. If you have a question that you would like me to make a video for, just um, email me or message me and I would make a video for free to answer your question and I will try to be as comprehensive and useful as I possibly can. Um, just message me, just message me. Um, Jogimari Freeman, I submitted my VAWA since 2017. I haven't heard from them. I would love to help you, my friend, because you, 2017 was a long time ago. That was in, you know, that was like four or five years ago. So let's, let's get going on this. Um, what would you say that your success rate is on fighting motion to dismiss situation? I've been waiting since January for an answer. We filed a lawsuit with your help. Um, I'm not afraid of fighting a motion to dismiss. Um, we get them routinely, and um, we've gotten tons of cases approved after a motion to dismiss is filed. They're pretty routine, um, and we have the resources at our firm to litigate these cases, to fight back, and our... Um, our fee, we charge a flat fee. It covers all that work. Um, so sometimes the clients freak out when we get a motion to dismiss, but we don't. It seems kind of normal to us because we, we do get those. Joy Lynn Goldstein, the best lawyer in town. Uh, I love you. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. That's very kind of you. I, I think I enjoy my job more than anyone. Um, so I really love what I do and I'm grateful for a chance to help people. And I'm also really grateful for each of you who spend some time with us in our in watching our content, our videos, um, our social media. And, um, you know, I love doing these videos and answering questions for people, it's something I'm passionate about. And so I'm grateful if you take a chance to tune in. I have some cool videos coming up. I made one about the mindset that you need to win an immigration case because there's a huge psychological battle. I have another video coming out about retaliation and how there, there is no retaliation against people who file lawsuits. Um, these are all important things. Uh, let's see here. Ramya, our friend on YouTube. My husband's H4 first time Dropbox appointment. He was on an F1 J1 visa on April 25th went and on May 13th the status was refused. Today we got an email to collect the passport and it still shows refused. Well, I think you should consider filing a lawsuit. I mean, how much longer are you going to wait? You know, waiting doesn't work. Um, that's why I don't think you should do it. Take action. And let's get this, get him the visa that he deserves and be done with it. Um, why is the NVC taking so long to do an interview? Um, I don't know. I don't know why they take so long. Um, and your other part of your question was, uh, why do you charge so much for a lawsuit? Our fees vary from case to case, but this is complicated work. I don't think it's, I think the, the value, I think the value of our lawsuits is substantially more than our fee. Um, you're getting a visa. You're getting your visa soon. 
and you're fighting back, you're challenging the delay, you're drawing on all of our knowledge, skills, and experience at litigating visa delays and, and immigration delays in federal court. And we've had people who've been waiting for years, for years and years and years, get their visas in a matter of months. And this is invaluable, especially when you're separated from your loved ones, from your family, from your educational and employment opportunities. I think the fee is invaluable. Um, how long do you think you should wait before you file a lawsuit during the AP process? Well, if you initially filed your case, I mean, I think you should consider booking an appointment with our team so we can evaluate. I'd like to know more about it. Let's get your visa approved. Let's get everybody unstuck and approved.